वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास दे गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Okay we're reading nectar of devotion and we're on chapter number 6 how to discharge devotional service So Rupa Goswami has listed many items different items different ways in which we can perform devotional service ตรงนี้เนี่ยรูปกุศลมีก็ได้เขียนเป็นรายการมาให้เราว่าเราเนี่ยจะปฏิบัติการวิตนเสสารับใช้เนี่ยได้ในรูปแบบไหนบ้าง So he began with ten things which we had to do แล้วท่านก็เริ่มต้นโดยการบอกถึงสิบประการที่เราเนี่ยควรที่จะทำ And then he gave ten things which we have to give up แล้วท่านก็บอกถึงสิบอย่างที่เราควรที่จะหลีกเลี่ยง So we're going to read the num the last one of the ten things which we have to give give up. It's the tenth item. Right? He says one should not be, one should one should be. One should be very intolerant towards the blasphemy of the supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna, or his devotees. In other words, we should not like to hear people blaspheme Krishna or his devotees. ฟังในการที่มีบุคคลเนี่ยสบประมาทกฤษณาหรือว่าสาวกของพระองค์ If people criticize or blaspheme Lord Krishna or Lord Krishna's devotees, then we should try to defeat them by proper arguments. ถ้าเกิดว่ามีใครเนี่ยพยายามที่จะสบประมาทกฤษณาหรือว่าสาวกของกฤษณาเนี่ยเราควรที่จะพยายามในการช่วยพวกเขาปกป้องพวกเขา And if we're not able to do that, then we should leave the place. แล้วถ้าเราไม่สามารถที่จะทำเช่นนั้นได้เนี่ยเราก็ควรที่จะออกไปจากสถานที่นั้น We should not stay to hear people criticize Lord Krishna and his devotees. เราไม่ควรที่จะนั่งฟังนั่งอดทนฟังเมื่อมีบุคคลเนี่ยด่าว่าคริสนาหรือว่าสาวกของพระองค์ If we stay and hear people criticize. Then we will become also guilty of their offense. ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยนั่งฟังเกี่ยวกับการด่าว่าของสาวกและกษัตริย์เนี่ยเราก็จะกลายเป็นหนึ่งในผู้ที่กระทำผิดนั้นด้วย We will be affected by hearing their criticisms. เราก็จะได้รับผลกระทบจากการฟังสิ่งเหล่านั้น So we have to be very careful if people start to say bad things. About Krishna and his devotees. Now it's very difficult to defeat people in Kali Yuga. People don't admit they're wrong. Even though you may give good arguments, they may not accept. So, the best thing to do is to immediately run away. Cover your ears and run away from the sound of people 
who criticize Krishna. All right. So then, Prabhupada explains if we do not follow these different principles, then we cannot properly advance in devotional service. So Srila Rupa Goswami says that he's, he's given, we've heard now 20 items, well, so we had 10 things we have to do and 10 things we have to avoid. And from these 20 items which we've heard, the first three are very, very important. The first one was that we have to take the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. The second thing was we have to take initiation and serve him. And the third thing is we have to show proper respect to the spiritual teacher. That means you have to follow his orders and instructions very carefully. You have to, you have, to have proper faith in what he says and you have to devote yourself to following his instructions. So sometimes the spiritual teacher will ask the disciple, are you going to do everything I say? So the disciple should say, yes, I'm ready to follow what you tell me. Just like yesterday, we observed the appearance day of Lord Nishringa Day. Now, on the appearance day of Lord Nishringa Day, we do not eat any grains. And we observe fasting until the evening. Now, of course, if you're an older person and you're not in very good health, then you may not have be able to fast. So, there's different ways to fast. Now, some people, they may do full fasting. They don't take any food or any water. But not, not everybody may be able to do that. So then you may have to drink water. And you and but some people may say, No, I have problem, I my health is not very good, I have to eat something. Then you can eat fruit. 
call them I. Yeah, we can eat fruits. But if you're still, if you're not able to manage to just eat fruits, then you may have to eat some ekarasi prasadam. Right. Akarasi prasadam means you eat some boiled vegetables like potatoes or sago. Right. But you, we don't take rice, we don't take beans, we don't take wheat. <coughs> So we don't, and we don't eat bread. <coughs> so if for some reason you're not able to do this, then you have to explain to the spiritual master why you cannot do this. <coughs> And he can give you instruction what you can eat. Actually, we're meant to follow this fasting on the appearance day of all of Lord Vishnu's incarnations. But because it's, uh, ISKCON is a big society and it's very difficult to provide a courtesy prasadam for everyone. So we only observe this rule on the fasting day of three of the Lord's appearances. That, just like on Lord Nishringadev's appearance day, Lord Krishna's appearance day, and Lord Chaitanya's appearance day. Uh, so on these three days we don't eat any grains. So that's a that's a concession given by Prabhupada. Actually we're meant to follow this on the appearance day of all of Lord Vishnu's incarnation. Just like other incarnations are Lord Rama, Lord Varaha, Lord Kurma, Lord Vamana. Usually what we do is a half a day fast. And because we only fast half a day, we can take grains in the midday. But on Lord Nishringadev's appearance, Lord Chaitanya's appearance, we fast until the evening. And on the appearance day of Lord Krishna, we fast until midnight. So you try to fast, try to do this, try to follow these rules.
เพราะฉะนั้นเราต้องปฏิบัติตามเราพยายามปฏิบัติตามกฎตรงนี้ These are instructions given by our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. นี่เป็นคำสั่งที่ให้โดยพระอาจารย์ทิพย์ของเราศิลปะ And he was taught by his spiritual master. เอ่อพระองค์เอ่อท่านเนี่ยก็ได้รับคำสอนนี้เนี่ยมาจากพระอาจารย์อีกครับ So this is the tradition among all the Vaishnavas. นี่ก็เป็นเอ่อเป็นวัฒนธรรมของวิชนาวะสืบทอดกันมาเรื่อยเรื่ So following the order of the spiritual master is important. การปฏิบัติตามคำสั่งของพระอาจารย์ทิพย์เนี่ยถือว่าเป็นสิ่งสำคัญอย่างยิ่ง Then you get the blessings of Krishna. แล้วก็จะทำให้เราเนี่ยได้รับพรของคริชนา Okay. Uh, all right. Now we're going to hear about some more activities which we can perform for devotional service. So next one is we should decorate the body with tilak, which is the sign. Of the Vaishnava. And the way that we are, we need to put up a brown tie, do it till up, which is the sign of the Vaishnava. So Prabhupada explains. He says, as soon as a person sees the marks on the body of a Vaishnava, he will immediately remember Lord Krishna. So Prabhupada says, when the person sees the marks on the body of a Vaishnava, he will immediately remember. And Lord Chaitanya said that a Vaishnava is someone who, whenever we see them, they remind us of Krishna. So it's very important that the devotees should mark the body with tilak. To help to remind others of Krishna. So we have to make some plans. Yang Ying, that Sawok, will be decorating the body with tilak, to remind others of Krishna. So when we mark the body with tilak, we should ask them to remind us of Krishna. So when we mark the body with tilak, we should understand we don't just put the tilak on the forehead. We put it on all the thirteen different temples of the body. เราจะต้องมีความเข้าใจก่อนนะเวลาเราทาตีรักบนบนร่างกายเนี่ยเราไม่ใช่ทาบนหน้าปากอย่างเดียวแต่เราจะต้องทาที่อื่นทั้งหมดให้ครบสิบสองที And when we mark the body with the tilak, at that time we have to say the different names of Lord Vishnu. แล้วก็ในแต่ละที่ที่เราเติมเนี่ยเราจะต้องมีการพูดชื่อของพระวิษณุ And on the forehead we say Om Keshavaya Namaha. And then on the lower waist, in the belly, we say Om Narayana Namaha. And then in the chest, we say Om 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 Narayana Om Madhavaya Namaha. And then we come up. To just below the neck, we say Om Keshavaya Namaha, Om Narayana Madhavaya Namaha, Om Govindaya Namaha. And then on the right waist, on the lower right waist, Om Vishnave Namaha. And then on the arm above the elbow, just above the elbow, Om Madhusudana Namaha. And then upper arm, just below the shoulder, Om Trivikrama, Trivikrama Namaha. And then on the The left waist, then Om Vamanaya Namaha. 
แล้วก็เอวซ้ายเนี่ยองวามันนายนะมั้ง And then the the lower left arm Om Sri Dharai Namah. Akan Sai na Om Sri Dharai Namah. And then upper arm Om Rishi Keshai Namah. Naga Akan Kamwan Pa na Om Rishi Keshai Namah. And then on the back, the lower back Om Dhamma Dharai Namah. Naga Dalang, Chang Dalang na Dalang na Om. And then the upper back, Om Padmanai Namaha. And then on the head, Om Vasudevaya Namaha. Right? So these are the different marks of the tea light which we put on the body. So, Lord Chaitanya was very particular. If devotees would come to his class without tilak, he'd tell them to go back and put tilak on. If you don't put tilak on, your body's like a dead body. So it's important put on tea like and then you remind people about Krishna. All right. Then the second thing we the second thing we can do is when we mark the body with tea like, sometimes we also write Hare Krishna on the body. Just using your finger, you just take the tilak and you write Hare Krishna on your body. And then the third thing is we should be we should accept the flowers and the garlands which have been offered to the deity or have been offered to the guru and we should be willing to put them on our body. Right. So sometimes. Some temples, what we do, we we offer flowers first to the deity, and after the flowers have offered to the deity, then we will offer the flowers to the spiritual master. And after they're offered to the spiritual master, then they can be offered to the devotees. And we we often put the garland on the neck of the devotee, so we should accept the garland, and we don't have to keep it on for a long time. It's up to you how long you like to keep it, but you should be willing to accept around your neck to wear it at least for a, a moment or two. Uh, we should understand this is Krishna's prasada. And we should be willing to wear it on our body. Then number four, we should learn to dance before the deity. So we have to learn how to dance, actually. People, you should understand dancing before the deity is not like you dance when you go to disco. Or when you go to dancing with your girlfriend or boyfriend, it's different when you dance for Krishna. 
เราจะต้องเข้าใจก่อนว่าการเต้นต่อหน้าพระปฏิมาของเราเนี่ยมันจะเป็นการเต้นที่แตกต่างกันออกไปไม่เหมือนกับการเต้นที่เราไปเต้นที่คลับหรือว่าเราไปเต้นกับแฟนหนุ่มหรือแฟนสาวของเรา Yeah, in Krishna consciousness, the men dance with the men and the women dance with the women. And Prabhupada taught devotees how to dance. So this dancing is called the Swamiji. And Prabhupada taught the devotees. He said, "You put your hands up in the air, right? Put your hands up in the air. Archana, uh, Archana, yes. put your hands up in the air, right? Right? You put yes. your hands up in the air, and then you go to the left and you go to the right. You go to the left and then you go to the right." We did that. The idea is to make the hands up and then. And then you chant Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Jan Archana. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this is dancing for Krishna. Of course, we should stand up. I was not standing up. I was sitting down. But we should stand up. And in this way, we will become spiritually blissful when we dance for Krishna. And remember, when we're dancing. We're dancing for the pleasure of the deity, for the pleasure of Radha and Krishna. So we don't look at other people; we just look at Krishna. And think of Krishna. And we should dance for Krishna every day. You should every day. You should have kirtan. Just like every day, we do arti. And when we are doing arti at that time, we dance for Krishna. And when we after we do arti, then we worship Tosi. We do Tosi arti, and then we dance for Krishna. And dance and go around Tosi. And in this way, you will become spiritually, spiritually blissful. <coughs> even miserable people, even people who are unhappy, who are not feeling happy, if they put their hands up in the air and they start to chant Hare Krishna and dance, they will become happy. Because the soul. Is very happy. The soul is joyful by nature. All right. The next one, number five. We should learn to bow down upon seeing the deity or the spiritual master. 
แต่ก็ห้าเนี่ยบอกว่าเราควรที่จะหักหัดที่จะก้มลงตราบทันทีที่เราเห็นพระปฏิมาหรือว่าพระอาจารย์ทิพย์ Now some people again maybe health problems are not able to bow down อาจจะคายบางคนเนี่ยอาจจะมีปัญหาสุขภาพไม่สามารถที่จะก้มลงกราบได้ Some people maybe they have a back problem they cannot bow down บางคนเนี่ยอาจจะมีปัญหาปวดหลังแบบก้มไม่ได้ Or a leg problem maybe they're not able to do it แต่ว่ามีปัญหาหัวเข่าแบบก้มไม่ได้ Sometimes people come late In Krishna consciousness, they're already old. And it's difficult for them to bow down. So they have to bow down in their mind. And they can bow down by words. Right. By words, we can say to Krishna, "Please accept my humble obeisances." And we should recite Prabhupada's pranam mantra. We should say Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami in eighty nine. So in this way, we show our respect to Krishna and to the spiritual master. Now some people say, "No, I don't want to bow down. I don't like to bow down." Then they will have to bow down to old age. They will bow down to disease, and they will bow down to death. And so, they don't like to bow down to the guru or to Krishna, but they have to bow down to old age, disease, and death. It's not very nice. Uh, so they may say, "Oh, you devotee, you're also growing old. You're also going to die. What's the difference?" The difference is we're going to go to Krishna. After this life, we will go to be with Krishna, but you're going to take birth again and again in many different bodies. You'll stay in the material world. By bowing down to Krishna, we will not have to bow down anymore to old age, disease, and death. So every morning, you should go bow down to Krishna. Go to the altar, see the deity, see your form of Krishna, see the form of Krishna and the Guru, and bow down. This is devotional service. Every morning I will do this. I do this. I bow down to my guru. I go to see Krishna. I bow down to Krishna. 
So I'm not asking you to do something different from me. Whatever I do, you should do the same. All right. So next thing, number six, as soon as one visits a temple of Lord Vishnu, we must stand up. Right, you go to the temple, you should stand up. Unless you're in a wheelchair, unless you're helpless. Sometimes devotees come in the wheelchair, they're in poor health and they're brought in the wheelchair. Of course, they're not able to stand up, but mentally they will offer their obeisances, then mentally they will stand up. And then number seven, when the deity is being born for a stroll in the street, a devotee should follow the procession. So sometimes the deity is brought out of the temple and is brought out in a procession. We bring the deity, so devotees should follow behind the deity. Deity goes in front and devotees follow behind. So, it's a tradition that in India, where, where there is the Vishnu temple, then there's two deities, there's the big deity and the small deity. So the big deities, they stay permanently in the temple. But the small set of deities, they're called the Utsava deity, and they're brought out whenever there's a procession, whenever there's a big festival, they can bring the deities out. And some of the temples, they will do it in the morning, and some temples will do it in the evening. Just like here in Mayapur, at certain times of the year, they will have the elephant procession. And they will bring the deity out and they will put the deities on top of the elephant. And the devotees will, some devotees will sit on top of the elephant holding the deity and they will walk around the temple. They will go around outside the temple. And of course, when there's a procession, there'll be a lot of kirtan, and some places they even have a band which comes in place, but there'll be a big kirtan. And they, and they will have a big umbrella which they hold over the deities. Mm. And the deities will sit on a special throne, a special altar which is made on the cart, 
or on a palanquin. And sometimes the deity will be carried by the devotees or sometimes it's carried by the elephant. So then the, when the deities come out of the temple onto the street, then all the devotees will come out to see the deity, to greet the deities and to offer respects. And many of the people who are living in that area, they will prepare some special prasadam to offer to the deity. And some, sometimes they will just bring fruits and sometimes they will cook something to offer to the deity. And so after the food is offered to the deity, then it's distributed to all the devotees. So it's a very nice mood, it's a festival mood, and everybody enjoys the festival. Uh, so when the deity comes out, all the servants in the temple, they all come to the deity and they will tell the deity about the accounts, how much money was spent. And they will tell the deity how much was the collection, how much was the donations. So the idea of this activity is to understand that the deity is the proprietor of the temple. And all the people in the temple, working in the temple, all the priests and the other people, they're all considered to be servants of the deity. So this is a very old system and it is still followed today. Have you met, met everyone? Yes, very much. All right. So it's the system. The deity comes out, everyone should follow the deity. So next item, number eight. A devotee must visit a Vishnu temple at least once or twice every day, morning and evening. So in Vrindavan, this is very strict principle. And everyone visit every different temple. So during that time, you can see there will always be many people moving. They all go come out, go to temple to see the deities, then have darshan of the deity. And Prabhupada said in Vrindavan, there's about 5,000 temples. So it's not possible to visit all the temples, 
But at least we should try to visit a dozen of the big temples, important temples. Just like in Vrindavan, the main temples are temples like Madan Mohan, which was started by Sanatan Goswami. And then we have also the Radha Govinda temple, which was started by Rupa Goswami. And then Radha Damada temple was started by Jiva Goswami. So, these are the three main temples. Then there's Radha Gopinath also. So, these are the main temples in Vrindavan. But there's there's also there's Radha Gokulananda, there's Radha Lokanath, there's Radha Raman, Radha Raman temple which was started by Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So our, of course, we try to, we should stay in our own temple, Krishna Balaram temple. That's the most important for us. And if you're going to visit the other temples, you should go with devotees. Don't go alone. Okay, next item, number nine. We must circumambulate the temple building at least three times. So in every temple, there's an arrangement to go around the temple at least three times. But some people, they make a vow to go around the temple more than three times. Some people make a vow to go around ten times and some fifteen times. So everyone makes a vow according to their ability. And the Goswamis, they used to circumambulate Govardhan Hill. So to go around Govardhan Hill, that's 22 kilometers. But San Sanatana Goswami was going around every day, even in his old age he would go around. And some people, they circumambulate Govardhan Hill in the morning, they circumambulate again in the evening. And Prabhupada said, we should also circumambulate the whole Vrindavan area. Uh, Just like in Vrindavan, there's a there's a special pathway called where you see the Braja uh, Vrindavan Parikrama, and if you walk on that pathway, you can go right around Vrindavan. It's about six kilometers. <laughs> So there's some, some devotees there in Vrindavan, they'll go around every day. And 
So this is devotional service. You use our legs, walking. And this way we're offering respects to Lord Krishna. All right. Now item number 10. We should worship the deity in the temple according to the regulated principle. And things like offering arti and offering prasadam and decorating the deity, these things must be done regularly. So sometimes we see devotees, they want to get deities and they bring the deity to their home. So you have to be very careful to do everything regularly. It's not that, oh, today I'll dress a deity, tomorrow I don't feel like dressing the deity, I'll do it another day. You have to do it every day. And when you begin to worship the deity, you have to decide how many artis are you going to offer every day, at least one arti a day. So you, you have to decide, are you going to do it in the morning or you do it in the evening? How many offerings are you going to make every day? Okay, breakfast, you're going to cook. You want to cook, offer breakfast. And then you offer again lunchtime, maybe you offer again in the evening, maybe you make three offerings, maybe you only make two offerings. Maybe you only make one offering a day. So, whatever you do, you have to do it regularly. Two principles are important in worshipping the deity. So one principle is cleanliness. And the next principle is punctuality. So those two things are very important to worship. And the more you worship the deity nicely, the more the deity will bless you with spiritual advancement. But if you don't serve the deity nicely, then it won't be good for your Krishna consciousness. So you have to be careful how to worship the deity. All right, we'll stop here tonight. Okay, we will ask, is there any questions? Okay, Vishnu Priya Madhuri has a question. Okay, Vishnu Priya Madhuri, what's your question? 
Para que sea como la ciudad de 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 la ciudad Uh, her question is if the initiated devotee they fall down uh, if they fall down will the guru and Krishna uh, still accept their service to what do you mean mm. They fall down and they're still going to do service. เขาตกต่ําแล้วเขาทําการรับใช้อยู่ไหมคะหรือว่าอะไรเอ่อไม่ได้รับใช้เลยอย่างเงี้ยค่ะคือแบบว่าเหมือนกับเหมือนกับว
เอาเงินเอาอาจจะเป็นในรูปแบบของการที่เอาทรัพย์สมบัติทางวัตถุของเขาไปหรือว่าเอาตําแหน่งหรือว่าเอาเขาแบบว่าให้ชีวิตออกห่างจากการปฏิบัติการหรือเพื่อนเสียสารับใช้อะไรอ so you cannot expect you can do sin and cheat Krishna. แต่เราจะหวังว่าเราจะทำกิจกรรมบาปไปด้วยแล้วก็เราจะแบบว่าปฏิบัติรับใช้ Krishna ไปด้วยแบบการโกง Krishna เนี่ยมันไม่ถูก Krishna will correct him. Krishna เนี่ยก็จะจัดการเขา If he does not correct himself, Krishna will correct. Him. ถ้าเกิดว่าเขาเนี่ยไม่ยอมปรับปรุงตนเองเนี่ยเดี๋ยวจะจะทำพิการจัดการให้ให้เขาปรับปรุงโอเคโอเคคุณมาราส thank you for your uh, answer so today is um Ajana appearance day คุณมาราส uh, I ask you to bless her <laughs> oh yes okay <laughs> Not appearance day, just birthday, Guruma. Yeah, <laughs> so very... many birds in this material world. Yeah. Okay. Please bless me. Okay, very nice. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> Vishnu Priya, for telling us. Yes, birthday girl. <laughs> we had two devotees uh, on Saturday. We had two two devotees' birthday on Saturday here. And on Sunday we had Lord n a s h r i n g a d e v s birthday, and today we have Archana's birthday. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Next question, Vaishnavi Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sri l a p r o p a d a Guru Maharaj, I have uh, doubts on three points uh, regarding the breaking the fast. On the Vishnu appearances day, is it compulsory that we have to break the fast with the non-grain? Some people uh, yesterday, one devotee asked me that uh, she doesn't want to break it uh, the evening. Can it? Can she have the food the next day? Because maybe she, it's not convenient for her to break it uh, with the ega desi prasadam. Uh, she, maybe has she has to cook or she doesn't want to cook something. Yes. Uh, if you if you're going to break the fa- it's all right if she wants to fast the whole day if she's not been taking any food or any water she can break fast just by taking a drink of water. Okay. I see. If you do near j a o if you didn't take yeah. any food or water, when it comes time to break the fast, you can just take some water. Water. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, yes, g u r u Maharaj. In case if we do just with water, then uh, some fruits maybe like that. No, if you've taken something, if you've taken some water, then you should take one grain. You take one grain of rice or something. Yeah, one uh, uh, non-grain, right, g u r u Maharaj? Maybe non v i s h n Yeah, you have to take grain. You have to take some kind. Of big- Of course, well, usually we're taking a k a d a s i prasadam, so uh, yeah. for n a s h r i n g a d e v it's not important. You can do full fasting until the next morning. Okay. Yeah, g u r u m a r a j Yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks, g u r u m a r a j Regarding the dance, how to learn? We have to learn dance. How to dance before the deity? In one of the Krishna Janmashtami celebrations, we all the ladies we did a strict dance uh, with the streaks and with the simple song. And one devotee told told us that it's not really very good for the ladies to come and uh, dance uh, in front of such a big group or something. Uh, then the next uh, Krishna Janmashtami we didn't plan any dance, uh, but I was a bit. Uh, Uh, but uh, now we are uh, dancing little bit in our uh, Friday programs. How to do it? Uh, can we also? Can the ladies also perform some simple stick dance in the Krishna Janmashtami festivals? Well, the stick dancing that is garba dancing, right? Yeah, with the stick. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Like uh, yeah, stick. You have to. 
the ladies will have two streaks and the other lady will also have two streaks. They have to hit each other, something yeah, like right. that. Well, that's something that's a, a tradition which uh, they have in, it's not really something for the pleasure of the deities, the gods. Uh, it's, a, it's something okay. different. You see, that's, that's something which the village people do, you know, Gujarati villages, they do that garba dancing. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can do it, you know, but it's not really, you know, sometimes... Idea. Yeah, it's, I, I, sometimes we do see it as presented, you know, it's a cultural presentation. So you want to, yeah. you want to do the garba dancing, uh, yeah, the, the ladies can do it, it's, you know, they do it for their own pleasure, you know. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj, just for a cultural performance right. on that day. Yeah, they enjoy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they, they can do the drama, right? What? They want to do the ladies and uh, men. Uh, drama, drama. The la bigger ladies can do the drama, Guru Maharaj? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, just be careful what kind of drama you do, you know. Uh, sometimes. Yeah, there are some places they won't let the ladies go in the drama because it, it's just something, you know, if you, <laughs> you know, to have w women there on the, on the stage in front of a bunch of men and, it, it, you know, you have to be careful what kind of drama they're actually doing. See, yeah, Prabhupada, yes. Prabhupada wanted that the drama should be done very, it should be, it shouldn't be, a joking thing. It should be done very seriously. You see, it, oh, yeah. it, it shouldn't just be oh joking and you know, everybody laughing. It should. It must be actually done according to the scriptures. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, yeah. We usually do the drama with this uh, young girls, uh, teenage girls. They do it. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Okay, Guru Maharaj. I I will try to research more on it. How to do it more nicely? Yeah, there are some instructions. Prabhupada wrote letters, different devotees instructing them how he wanted the dramas. You can try to read Prabhupada's letters. Okay. What Prabhupada said about dramas, how he wanted them done. Uh, you have, we have okay. to be. A, we have, you have to be a. Yeah, li I, I, you have to be a little conscious about, you know, who are who are the audience and what kind of people you have playing what kind of parts, you know. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So. Yeah, if you use younger people, that's always better. Yes. You get the younger people, the younger girls, rather than the older girls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, my last, uh, sorry, Guru Maharaj, just one more uh, point. Regarding the deity worship, you said cleanliness and punctuality, two main points. Uh, sometimes punctuality becomes a bit uh, difficult for me. I started Gauranitai worship uh, for the past few months. Uh, we ha I have it as a procedure to open the altar at 6 a.m. and then offer some fruits, water, followed by a full, uh, giving a uh, giving them a bath and followed by a full meal and then arti. And then I close it. Uh, and the, the, again, I have to open it. That that timing is also not, I'm not able to set it up because sometimes I have to cook in between. Then uh, I am in a doubt, how can I do it without offering? And I open the altar early. This kind of things going on, Guru Maharaj. Of course, of course, Mataji, Sri Devi, Mataji, Yogita, Mataji, they are helping me with some of the tips. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, Guru Maharaj. So yeah, of course, it's at home. At home, you can't be very punctual. There's always things to be done, and Krishna understands that. You know, home worship is not going to be like in the temple. Okay. When you're alone. What can you do? So much on your yeah. own. Yeah, Guru Maharaj. 
and just you try to do your best. Uh, they make the point that when the woman is contaminated, then she's better to not touch the deities. Yes, Guru Maharaj, we are not doing any cooking. We close the altar and uh, do the 10 minutes keep then and other things like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, all right. Sri Devi Maharaj. Yes, Sri Devi Maharaj. Sri Devi Gorangi Maharaj is here. Yes, I'm here. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Guru Maharaj, I have a question regarding what is what is the difference between observing austerity and taking care of the body? Because uh, there is a one one my my devotee friend and I always seem to get into an argument about this matter. Whenever I talk about austerity, she will straight away say, take care of the body. Uh, nobody is going to take care of you. If you don't take care of the body, who will come and take care of you? So whenever I, I speak about some austerity that we need to undergo, she will say, take care of the body. She will say, Prabhupada said, Kila Prabhupada said, must take care of the body. Health comes first. I don't know where, where she got this from or how far it's true. So I want to clarify with Guru Maharaj, uh, please help me and her understand what is the meaning of austerity, what is the meaning of take care of the body. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh -huh. Well, you could say austerity is also taking care of the body, because if you don't do austerity, then you make your body too comfortable and uh, it become, you eat too much, and then it's also a problem. So some ways, you know, austerity is, is taking care of the body also. You could say that by doing austerity, you are, you are taking care of the body. And you keep your body healthier and fitter. Yes. So, like, like, like we might watch, on a day, like we have to do fasting like that, the difference between uh, both our approach to the fasting is, like for me, I, I am also under long-term medication for two types of, uh, two different kinds of problems, health issues. But on the day, like for example, uh, Lord Narasimha's appearance day, I observed a, a full fast, uh, drinking uh, water three times a day. I drank water and uh, that's about it. I observed the fast till uh, the breaking fast time in the evening. Uh, whereas uh, she said, for her, uh, she, she said, uh, those who are taking medication, like in my case, I didn't take my medication for the day. I just forgo the med the medication when 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 I need to do uh, this type of fasting. I just forgo the medication. Whereas she said that uh, she she needs to take her medication. So uh, she says that take care of the body. The health is important. And if we collapse and fall, uh, what is going to happen? So like that, I have difficulty speaking to her. Shall I not talk about this topic to her? Avoid the topic, Guru Maharaj. Because we have different approach to the thing. Well, everybody, you know, you know your own limits, you know, and if your if the health is if your health is really affected by not taking the medicine, then you should take the medicine. But if you feel that your body can manage one day without the medicine, then okay, you can do that. It's up to the individual to decide, you know. If she, she has to take the medicine, let her take the medicine, no problem. Okay. Yeah. And okay. if you manage to go without your medicine for one day, then okay, mm. not a problem. Mm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. And, and uh, may I just add another question, Guru Maharaj? Yes. Uh, when, 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 when people ask us, how do you know how do you know these things? And then we say that it is through scriptures. We know it through the scriptures. Then, then they, then they say, well, the scriptures are for you. The scriptures are not for us. So how how do we respond to, to something like that, Guru Maharaj? Thank you. Well, the, yeah, the scriptures are for people who have faith in in the Lord, and who have faith in the teachings of the great sages. And people who don't have faith, then 
okay, then we leave them to their fate. They don't have faith in the Lord, they don't have faith in the teachings of the saintly persons. Well, what can we do? We, they have their choice, yeah, they have free will. Okay. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. There's two kinds of people. There's a devotee and there's a demon. Right? Devi Sampad and Asurik Sampad. There's always people who will surrender to Krishna and there's people always who will not surrender. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes four kinds of people who never surrender. So they don't have any Sukriti. They're Naradamas. Uh, they're the lowest of men, or they're like donkeys, like mudhas, or they're asuram baba mashrita, they're atheistic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So four kinds of people are there in the Bhagavad Gita who surrender, and four kinds of people who do not. So Krishna talks about them in the Bhagavad Gita. You can tell them, oh, you're in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talked about you. And he said, four kinds of people who will never surrender to him. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I understood. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Archana? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Ma Mataji, na, Mataji got ham, learn, can, give a wa, uh, tam, can, pati, but, to see, na, like, a toa, how, eh, never, he, how, me, look, who are you, how, little, don't, kin, na, say, so, na, so, okay, my, na, do, ma, go, 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 da, you, how, what, tam, lao, te, สุขภาพร่างกายที่ตนจะทําได้แล้วก็อีกคนหนึ่งก็คือมีคนเหมือนกับบอกเขาว่าแล้วตรงนี้เนี่ยคำพีพเวทเนี่ยมันเป็นสําหรับเธอที่บอกให้เธอถือสินไม่ได้บอกให้เราถือสินตรงนี้เนี่ยเราจะทำยังไงได้บุตรมาแล้วก็ตอบว่าในส่วนของตรงนี้เนี่ยมันก็คือหลักขึ้นอยู่ที่ความศรัทธาของคนถ้าเกิดว่าบุคคลเนี่ยจะไม่ปฏิบัติตามคําสอนที่หลักพระเวทได้แนะนําไว้หรือว่าสิ่งที่เอ่อพระเวทได้บอกไว้เนี่ยถ้าเขาจะไม่เชื่อตรงนี้เนี่ยเราก็จะทําแบบว่าโน้มน้าวหรือว่าให้เขาปฏิบัติตามกฎระเบียบต่างๆตรงนี้เนี่ยมันก็จะเอ่อเป็นไปได้ยากนะคะโอเค thank you Archana y u v a t i s a c h i m a t u j i has a question y u v a t i s a c h i m a t u j i Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All Guru Shri s h i l a Prabhupad, Guru Maharaj. My question is: uh, Are the holy places like uh, Vrindavan Dham, Mayapur Dham, Jagannath Puri, uh, spiritual places in the material world, or uh, they are material places? Uh, how should we uh, believe properly? Well, to a, to a devotee. They're spiritual places. They're not material places. Prabhupada said, "You don't go to Vrindavan just by buying a ticket. It's not just a place on the map. If you want to actually enter the holy land of Vrindavan, you have to change your consciousness. So it's not an ordinary place. It's a spiritual world." Prabhupada was traveling in America one time, and he said, "Let's go back to Godhead. Let's go to Mayapur." So, these are holy places. They're called the Dam. The Dam means a place where the Lord resides eternally. Krishna is residing eternally in Vrindavan, and Lord Chaitanya is eternally here in Mayapur. The pure-hearted devotees, they will see him. But if we're not pure, of course, we won't be able to see. So, people who are materialistic, they they cannot see the dam. The dam is covered for them, covered by the illusion. They just see the material world. So it's different for different people. But those who are the devotees, they will see the holy land. You understand? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Now it's clear. Arjuna. Kam tham na ha. Tham wa. Sathan thi sat sit yang Maya Pur Vrindavan le Jaya Puri web ni na. Ani na pen lok kip thi yu nai lok watu le wa pen lok watu na ha. Sering Guru Maharaj ka bawa man. 
สำหรับสาวกแล้วเนี่ยคือโรคทิบมันขึ้นอยู่กับคนที่ดูหรือว่ารับรู้นะคะสถานที่เหล่านี้เนี่ยเราจะเรียกว่าด่างด่างแปลว่าอะไรด่างแปลว่าที่ที่กระชันเนี่ยทรงอาศัยอยู่นิรันดรหมายถึงตั้งแต่อดีตการที่มาบูนะก็คือพระองค์เจ้าเจตันยทรงอยู่ปัจจุบันก็ทรงอยู่แต่มันก็ขึ้นอยู่กับว่าสาวกเนี่ยที่ปฏิบัติอย่างเคร่งครัดหรือว่าบริสุทธิ์มากขนาดไหนที่จะสามารถรับรู้หรือว่าเห็นถึงตรงนั้นได้นะถ้าสำหรับนักวัตถุนิยมเนี่ยดามเนี่ยจะถูกปกคลุมไว้จะถูกปิดไว้ด้วยอวิชาแต่เขาก็จะดูสิ่งนั้นเนี่ยเหมือนกับเป็นแค่ประเทศหนึ่งเป็นแค่จังหวัดหนึ่งแต่แล้วมีเหตุการณ์ครั้งหนึ่งเนี่ยเชลพระวันเคยบอกกับลูกศิษย์ว่าไปเรากลับไปหากริชนากันเถอะเรากลับหากริชนากันเถอะที่มายาก็คือสําหรับสาวผู้บริสุทธิ์เนี่ยทางที่เหล่านี้คือมีมีลีละมีพระพระเจ้าเนี่ยอยู่ตลอดปัจจุบันก็ยังมีอยู่แต่พวกท่านเนี่ยจะรับรู้ได้โดยวิญญาณทั่วไปจะรับรู้ไม่ได้โอเค thank you Archana okay so we thank all the devotees for their questions thank Archana for translation thank okay. you we hope Archana will have a nice happy birthday today happy evening thank you thank you okay you take care have a long life we need you very much I need you too very much Hare Krishna. s h i l a p r a b h p a d ki jai. Gorbhaj ki jai. Gorbhaj ki jai.